Hi everyone, welcome to the Coding Zoo. This is your first time joining. My name is Shane and this is the JavaScript Building Blocks series. In today's lesson, we're going to cover factory functions. In our previous lesson, we covered object literals and constructor functions. We're going to show you the difference in using a factory function. We're going to show you the, the downside to using constructor functions. And we're going to show you why you should probably use factory functions when you want to create multiple instances of an object instead of constructor functions. If that interests you, stick around. We're going to jump right in. Hey, Nicholas. Bye. All right. So, hey, on my desktop, I went ahead and prepared some examples. Uh, we're going to go over a uh, constructor function again, and we're going to show you what a factory function looks like. We're going to show you the differences in the, in the two. A factory function is better at hiding data uh, using uh, what's called closure. Let's go ahead and look at the constructor function. I have a main.js and I have an index file that includes that main.js. Uh, I'd recommend you go ahead and pause the video and type this code out as I uncomment it and try it out yourself. Get used to it. If you don't have time for that, check out thecodingzoo.com, thecodingzoo.com, our lessons page. We usually will have the code out there within a week or two of publishing the video. Let's go ahead and look at this constructor function. All right, so I have a function called tiobe index entry, and I pass in a language of rating in a year, and it's going to return uh, an object that has a language, year, and the rating. Below that, I go ahead and instantiate uh, that index entry into the variable called entry. I pass in Java and these parameters, and then I document write those out. Let's see how that works. Let's make sure that works. I'm going to click refresh. There we go. So I wrote out the language and I wrote out the year. Let's go back. Now that's that's pretty neat. It created an object with the parameters I passed in. Um, I could go ahead and create a new object and pass in different uh, parameters. And then I'd have more than one object of the same type that had different values. I can go ahead and reuse uh, that definition of an object to contain uh, different values. Pretty neat. What's the downside? Well, let's look at that. What's the downside of constructor functions? I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this code here. So one of the downsides is, well, you got to remember to do new each time. Uh, you won't actually get an error if you don't use the word new. Check this out. See, there's no word new like there is right here. So what will happen if I uh, create a new entry? and then do document write and I'm going to write out a variable or a property of the window. Now the window is my um, browser window. So what's going to happen is, is if you don't have the word new, the this in this function is going to refer not to uh, this scope uh, of this function. It's going to refer to the calling code, which happens to be the window. So when I do this dot language, I'm actually setting a global variable in the window. When we use the word new, um, that doesn't happen. This variable is not attached to the window. So if I run this, we should see that it's still going to print out the language and the rating, which is kind of bad because I just made a global variable that anybody can access outside of this object that I was trying to create. That's not a good thing. Um, let's save it. Click refresh and there we go. So we have both entries. I was able to print the data and the data is tied to the window. So what happens if I um, try to um, print it from the entry? Entry rating language, entry rating. So let's try it that way and let's click refresh. Well, it only printed out the first one. It didn't print out the second one. Why didn't it? Uh, well, let's look. There we go. Cannot read property language of undefined. Even though it looks like with this this that we're assigning these variables to the object that's created from this TO index entry. Well, you know, we're not really creating an object here because we're not using the word new. Uh, this isn't returning an object. This is returning basically uh, undefined. This function isn't returning an object. It's not actually creating an object and returning it. It's actually um, attaching these values to the window uh, as properties. Here you don't have an, so here you don't have an object given back. Here uh, you're given a new object that has those properties. 
So in this case, you're not even creating an object. So that's one of the downsides. Now that kind of happened uh, in uh, a good bit and, and people got creative and they found out a way to write some little bit of extra code uh, to get rid of that problem. But it's, you know, it's kind of hacky, it's kind of dirty. Why even use a constructor function when you can just use a factory function? You'll see that in a few minutes. So what this code does is it actually checks and see um, if this is is this equal to the to this function if it's not then it returns a new one right so it actually runs the new for you uh, by calling itself so let's run this I'm gonna comment these two out I'm gonna comment all of this out and uncomment that I don't need that line of code. Let's see what happens when I run it now. Okay. All right. Undefined, undefined. Well, why was it undefined? Because I'm printing out window.language. Even though I didn't use the word new, well, this block of code took care of it for me. It, it did the new for me. So that was one way to get around that problem. If I go ahead and change this to entry and entry, um, you'll see that it is attached to an object. Let's click refresh. There we go. Now you can see the data. So that was one way to get around it. Uh, it works. I still wouldn't use this way for creating objects. I would rather use uh, a factory function. So let's look at a factory function. I'm going to comment this code out. And here is an example of a factory function. So I have a create tiobe index entry. I'm using an arrow function here. It's a new way of creating functions in ES6. We uh, covered that in a previous lesson. So this arrow function, I passed in language, rating, and year. You don't have to use an arrow function, by the way. So I passed in language, rating, and year. I assign language to a variable called prog language. Now this only has scope to this function. So what we're doing here is what's called closure. Um, prog language, language rating, and year rated. Because it's defined here, it is only scoped to this function. Anything outside of this function can't access those variables. So how do we create an object using this factory? Well, we return a new object literal. And we take that data, prog language, lang rating, and we assign it to properties on that new object literal. And each time you call this method, it's going to create a different object literal. It's going to create a different object. Let's just call it a different, let's just call it an object. It's going to create a different object. All right. I also added a function on to this object. That function writes out the year rated. Now notice I uh, didn't expose year rated. It's enclosed in here. Uh, I'm not exposing it as a property here. So if I access the object return from here and I do object dot um, year rated, then it probably will fail. If I do object dot year, it will fail also. That property is just simply not defined on the objects returned. Let's try it out. So let's do this. Let me uncomment this and do let save it refresh and there we go so I have C and 2 so I actually created an object by passing in C2 in 2018 I wrote it out and I accessed the object using the entry dot language entry dot rating it properly assigned all of the data to the correct property it didn't assign it to the window and it's storing it inside a closure so these properties aren't accessible outside of this function unless we expose them so let's try that out so we created a property year rated from the year well what happens if i try to access it on that object entry dot year rated let's see what happens save it undefined we didn't define that property. We did not expose that data. So we've basically put that data in a closure. It's somewhat private. All right, so let's try out that function. So we added a function to that object. 
that function chooses to expose the year rated, but it exposes it however we want to expose it. And we could add more and we could add more data onto that property to make it look a little different. Maybe we want to expose it like that. Okay. Save it, click refresh. And there we go. So when I access the year, I do so through a function and it's exposed that way. So this is an example of a factory function. It returns an object created with the data you pass in and it encapsulates that data. Uh, you can have private variables. You could, you could not expose some of those variables and just use those variables in like calculations that are called through functions or rather called through methods on the object. Uh, you can expose some of those properties uh, on the object. It's up to you. You can encapsulate your code basically using closure. So I hope that makes sense. It provides a way to hide your data to encapsulate it and you won't have the problems you have with constructor functions. It's much, much cleaner in my mind for constructor functions. I would prefer not to even use constructor functions. Just use function factories when you need multiple instances of the same type of object and just use object literals when you want a, uh, like a singleton type object, an instance of the object one time. Uh, that's my recommendation. In our next lesson, we're going to check out the EX6 way of creating objects with the keyword class. We're going to look at how that's done. Uh, we're going to look at extends and dig deep into that. It's kind of a controversial type topic. I come from the Java world, so I kind of like the class. There are some ups and downs to it, though. We'll get into that in the next lesson. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope this makes sense. If you did, please click subscribe if you're not already subscribed and, and come back and see us again. Click the like button if you like the video. If you know anybody who wants to learn how to program, hey, send them our way. Check out the website, thecodingzoo.com. Uh, we have a list of all of our videos out there. Hey, uh, thanks for joining. I hope to see you again.